What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we're coming to you from Jakarta, Indonesia. We're going to show you the best things to do. Let's do it. That's right everybody. We're going to show you all around Jakarta, Indonesia. So let's go ahead and get into this list right here, right now. First up, here we are at SCBD. This is also known as Sudraman Central Business District. This is one of the high-end areas to walk around at night here in Jakarta. Very modern. And then right down the road here, you have Senopati which I would say is probably the best nightlife area in all of Jakarta. And one of my favorite things to do for nightlife is actually go to the top of some of these rooftop bars. This one here is actually at the Langham Hotel right here in the SCBD. So uh, rooftop bars, nice place, very relaxing, modern and contemporary. So if you're looking for a good time out on the town in the evening time, you can't go wrong with a rooftop bar. There's plenty of different bars around the Senapati and SCBD area, but rooftop bars are my favorite. Just like Bangkok, for those of you who've seen our video over there, you know I love rooftop bars. Next up, visit some of the local food markets. If you love nasi goreng, mei goreng, or nasi badong, you can try different types of foods here in Indonesia. Satay is obviously a classic. There's also a few different types of soups, but definitely hit up the food markets. Now here we are at the Thousand Islands National Park. This is about an hour north of Jakarta, just off the coast of Java, and they have tropical islands up here. You can get a ferry to come out here. You can talk to some of the local guides about getting out here. Now here we are at Monas. Now this is more of the commemorative square uh, it's an independence area, it's a park, people come out here to do exercise, walk around, relax, and it's right here in the heart of Jakarta, really, right in the central area. So if you guys are looking for a place to go in the evening time, right in the heart of the city that's not too busy with lots of traffic, come out here to Monas. Just down the road is the Istiqal Majesty Mosque. This is one of the best mosques in all of Jakarta. Uh, it's a religious site, but people like to walk around here just to get a feel of the culture and the vibes around Jakarta. And it's right next to Monas, so easily accessible. It is the largest mosque in Southeast. It is the largest mosque in Southeast Asia and the ninth largest mosque in the world. And that does make sense since Jakarta is the second largest urban area in the world with over 30 million people. So big city here, mega city actually. And here we are at the Jakarta Cathedral. This is the Catholic Church just across the street from the mosque. This is an old structure and you can go inside and you know, you're going to get the Islamic culture across the street and then the Catholic right here. And they are doing some renovations to preserve and modernize it and secure this actual cathedral. Now here we are on the Jakarta MRT. So one of the best ways to get around that traffic in Jakarta is on the MRT. This is the metro system. It does go below ground and above ground. And you can actually get one of the Jakarta metro cards and save yourself a lot of money and time by riding this. Jakarta and most of Indonesia does have a modern transportation system whether it be the airport or this here MRT or even the high-speed train that connects to Bandung. Now here we are in the old Chinatown area. This is Kawasan Glodok Pankoran, Chinatown Jakarta right here. And you can walk around here, find plenty of Chinese restaurants, also some Chinese old colonial structures. Uh, it's not like a typical Chinatown. It's not preserved in that way, but it is worth noting that you can come down here and check out the Chinatown area. There are a few uh, hotels down here, for example, the Holiday Inn that you may stay at, save some money and be right here next to Chinatown. Just giving you an insight into this area. Just down the road is the old town where the Dutch colony was. This here is the Museum Bank of Indonesia. A few different museums down here in Kota Tua. So Kota Tua basically means old town. And as I said previously, this is where the Dutch uh, colonial area was, in particular the headquarters for the Dutch East India Company, uh, which was occupying this area all the way up until about 1950. <laughs> That was a look at some of the locals that do some singing down here. They have a lot of different uh, vendors or people doing theatrics or putting on a show down here. You'll see people dressed up as old Japanese soldiers, 
Kind of like what you would see in La Rambla in Barcelona. Also, they have lots of food stalls and it's really a nice area to go walk around in the evening time. Japanese soldier. Japanese soldier yeah. bike. Ah, is this samurai? Yes, my is a samurai and Japanese weapon. Wow. World War One or two? World War One. World War One. The bike. The bike. But me, World War Two. World War Two. When the Japanese lose, they come here. Uh, I'm here. My my character. I'm finished for our soldier to come from Japan. You're a Japanese soldier right now. Yes. Yes, my name. That is my name. Aha. This here is Jakarta Kota, which is one of the train stations. There are a few different ones. This is a bit older, so you're not going to get the high speed train out of Jakarta Kota, but you can get a train all over Indonesia from here. And in some regards, trains are faster than driving cars, especially if you're on a road with lots of traffic. But actually, let me clarify this statement. You can get a train anywhere around Java from here because there's over 17,000 islands in Indonesia and Java is the most populated island, which is where Jakarta is. Jakarta is on West Java and you can get all the way to East Java on one of these trains. Now here we are at Galaro Bung Karno. So this is the stadium. This is the national stadium where you can watch soccer or football as they call it over here on this side of the world or any other sports activities. Jakarta does have many modern malls. This here is Plaza Indonesia. I actually stayed at the Grand Hyatt while I was here. Across the road, they have the Kempinski, but Plaza Indonesia is a very modern contemporary area to hang out. And definitely try some local food, nasi goreng. They also have international cuisine in these malls and across Jakarta, but nasi goreng, mee goreng, uh, beef randong, Lots of different cuisines that you've got to try when you're here. You do have to be a bit careful if you're going to one of the food stalls, uh, especially, with the, especially with the soup at those food stalls outside of the main areas. Obviously, I'm eating at a restaurant here in Plaza Indonesia that was Japanese restaurant. So everything was clean and good here. I didn't have any issues with stomach. But in Indonesia, I have had it twice where I had gastro issues. And both times, I'm pretty sure it was because of the soups that I was just... Guys, okay, so this is my driver, Booty. If you guys are coming to Jakarta and you have some questions, you can contact him. He's taking great care of me. Hello. <laughs> yeah, Booty. Oh, yes, my name is Booty. <laughs> we'll put a link to his Instagram right here. So now what we're going to do is talk about things to know when visiting Jakarta. This is a review on my behalf from here in Jakarta. So let's get into this review. So let's talk about some things to know about Jakarta. First up, everyone knows before getting here that Jakarta is known for its traffic, right? But there's other things that are going to cause you some frustrations as you go around Jakarta. One of those things is the language barrier. So most people that live here don't speak uh, any other language other than Indonesian. And that's very common. I mean, if you go to most countries, the native tongue, rarely do people speak languages but that is definitely the case here in Jakarta uh, Bali you know more people speak English or a universal language like English I should say but uh, yeah here <laughs> pretty much the tour guides the hotel staff it's 50 50 with them I mean even as you go into like a hotel even if you're at like the highest end hotel most of the people do not speak English as you talk to them my tour guide right now, he doesn't speak any English, so Google Translate is my friend, so be sure to download that app before you get here, or any sort of translation app. All right, so now let's talk about the safety uh, of hanging out here in Jakarta. So for the most part, it seems like there's not a lot of foreigners here, at least European or Western foreigners. I can't tell if there's any other uh, foreigners here because, you know, Indonesia does have a variety of ethnicities that have blended in here, Chinese and uh, other ethnicities that came down here. Some of the Dutch obviously have intermarried, but most of the time uh, the people here, they're usually more curious about you than they are looking to be a threat. Now there are some areas that you probably shouldn't go. I'm not 
too brushed up on any of those dangerous areas because I haven't been to any of those, but I would say uh, the CBD area is safe. I would say this area here, Kotatua, safe here in the old town where the Dutch are. But uh, yeah, this probably the most dangerous thing is trying to cross the road so far that I've seen. Uh, it's really hard to get across a busy road. You have to kind of slowly make sure you're safe getting out there. All right, so let's talk about transportation getting around. So most people around here get around on uh, motorbikes. That means you can also get around on the back of a motorbike using the GoJack app. So download GoJack, but I technically, I actually prefer using the uh, Grab app. It's very cheap, good pricing. Uh, so download Grab and GoJack. But if you want a taxi, Bluebird is your best option. So you'll see the blue taxis right there. That's Bluebird. And then you've got uh, Bluebird Black, which is a larger uh, kind of van. A little bit more expensive than the regular Bluebird, but uh, that's a great way. And then, as we talked about earlier, the uh, metro system, riding the train around the city is an outstanding way to get around even faster. Uh, even if you wanted to go to other places around Indonesia, taking the fast train. So yeah, as far as climate goes, uh, I found it to be better to go out in the evening times, uh, just because in the daytime it's so darn hot, and it's a bit like uh, soot filled in the air. So there's like this mist of pollution or smog, or I don't know what it is exactly. It feels like it's smog, but it kind of dampens the direct sunlight, although it is quite hot. So. Uh, mornings are okay up until about 12 and then after 12 it's cooking and then till about four o'clock you don't really want to be outside walking around too much and let's talk about the cost of travel or the cost of uh, accommodation cost for everything so i've seen very super cheap accommodation i've also seen very cheap accommodation for uh luxury uh, like a grand high it's like 200 dollars a night i mean there's not too many places you'll stay at a Grand Hyatt for $200 a night, but the Holiday Inn right here nearby uh, Kuta Tour, about $55 to $60 a night, not too bad. Uh, but you can get something much cheaper than that, just depends on your budget. Uh, $20, $30 a night seems to be very common across the city. As far as food, I mean, you could eat at a luxury restaurant and pay, you know, top dollar. Uh, which is down more in the CBD area, or you could eat down here for less than a dollar. <laughs> so it just really depends on where you're at, what your budget is. Uh, but a place like this, very cheap food. They also have expensive food, uh, like a dim sum restaurant right here. Uh, so cost seems to be generally affordable, especially if you get a Metro card. Taking a taxi for 20 minutes, say, seems like it costs around like six or seven dollars running the meter. So that gives you a perspective on that. But to super save money, just get one of those Metro cards and ride the train for transportation. All right, so let's talk about the weather and the climate here in Jakarta. I'm here right now in uh, July. It's very dry. We haven't seen a drop of rain. I guess this is the dry season, which is interesting because if you went up towards Singapore or Thailand, it's the rainy season and they're not too far away from here.